hello, I'm Emilio Lozano, head of the Workplace Solutions. Um, uh, can you go to the next slide, please, Adrian? Okay, uh, apologies for the uh, amount of information I put it here, but this is a summary of our sprint. Uh, we committed 47.66% uh, of the points we, sorry, we completed 47% 40, of the points we had committed for this sprint, but we still have one day left and uh, there are many tasks that will be completed today, especially everything related with upgrade to 4.1. So this velocity will change at the end of the day. And uh, for the composition of this sprint, we again focused on back fixing. So more than a third of our uh, issues were back fixes and not including all the tasks uh, involving the upgrade to model workplace 4.1, to model 4.1, sorry. There are a number of features that are still waiting for peer review or especially in peer review or integration to review that will be completed today. So as I said, this velocity will increase. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Adrian. So these are the goals we have for this sprint. Uh, the main goal was the advanced tenant appearance settings, which has been completed and I'll explain it shortly. And the other uh, big topic we have for this sprint was the uh, Moodle Workplace 4.1 release, uh, including this new dual version approach that we're starting with 4.1. And um, this is ongoing and, and I'll also update you shortly. And from the discovery point of view, uh, we completed the, the short and uh, midterm feature prioritization within the PAG. So now we have everything that uh, we need to uh, come up with the roadmap for the, with the with an update roadmap for the next six to 18 months that we're working on right now will be published uh, shortly. And we'll continue with the learning catalog discovery. And now we're in the uh, user story analysis and feature and cash sorting prioritization uh, with the PAG but something that we're planning to complete during the next sprint. So uh, for the next increment, we have uh, a clear definition of what is an MVP of the, um, of the learning catalog, and we can start the prototyping. So can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, so the first big thing uh, we have, or, or the main big thing we have completed in this sprint is the advanced tenant appearance settings. Uh, basically, in 4.0, Oh, we simplify the tenant appearance settings basically to reduce the risk of, of non-accessible core combinations to be set by tenant admins. So we try to simplify this branding configuration to avoid this situation. While we hide, we hit some of these features. Uh, um, so only partners or only developers could not not really developers, but they could be changed using CSS. But partners and other stakeholders requested us to bring them back because they 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 wanted to to be able to do this. So we found a way of doing that without compromising the site accessibility. Uh, we brought them back, and this is how we did. So next slide, please, Adrian. So basically, what we did is adding. So we added back to settings to the tenant branding configuration. Basically the navigation bar, background color, and the primary button color, and also move the CSS setting to an advanced section. So basically what we did is creating a new section in the branding uh, page, which is advanced, and we moved all these new features to that section. Can you go to the next slide, please, Adrian? And we also introduced a new capability to uh, define who is able to edit it this advanced branding. By default, this capability is only only the site admins have it, that uh, site admins can grant this capability to tenants. So in summary, these features will be available to this advanced branding tenant uh, configuration will be available to site admins only, but they can give this permission to, uh, to tenant admins if they think uh, it is okay. So we just add it back in a safer way. So uh, next slide, please, Adrian. And of course, we take off all, all the upgrade scripts from previous versions. So another thing we did in this spring was the uh, adding the tenant allocation rules in service space. It's a, key, it's a bit technical, sorry, but I'll try to simplify it. So in WordPress, we have dynamic rules to uh, allocate users to tenants. 
and these uh, dynamic rules have both conditions to uh, to um, to check if a user whether a user is in a tenant or not, and actions to allocate users to a tenant if they meet the criteria of the dynamic rule. These uh, conditions and actions were not available in the shared space, which is like a special tenant we have in Workplace to create things that are shared among all tenants for some permission uh, restrictions, basically because we couldn't show details of shared rules to users who have no permission to see all the tenants and things like that. So in order to uh, add these tenant allocation rules to the shared space, we had to implement uh, we have to um, do some changes in the dynamic rules API so conditions and actions can mask or hide some sensible information for users who cannot see that, that information. So by doing that, we have been able to add these uh, tenant allocation rules, which, is, which are very useful because uh, they allow to create, allow admin to create automations in the server space and things like if the uh, user, if the email domain of this user is at Moodle.com, then allocate this user to the Moodle tenant. And we can do that in the set space instead of creating this rule in all tenants. So this is something we have added to this sprint. There are some small bits that are still in progress, but we're planning to add it up into 4.1. Uh, next slide, please, Adrian. And the, uh, the other big topic of this release, of this sprint, is the WordPress 4.1 release. So uh, the upgrade to 4.1 is being completed in this sprint. So between today and probably if there's something outstanding tomorrow, we'll finish with all the upgrade tasks and we'll be in the position to start with the QA test. So uh, in the next sprint, we're going to uh, do the QA testing for 4.1, but this week we're going to release 4.1 beta to partners. So partners will have 4.1 features available, but on Moodle, uh, based on Moodle LMS 4.0 instead of Moodle 4.1. Uh, and at the end of this sprint, we will release both the stable and rolling final versions of uh, WordPress 4.1, just after the QI uh, cycle. Uh, next slide, please, Adrian. Uh, we have added a number of other improvements. This is just, uh, these three are just the highlights. So we added a department to uh, a department field to the user profile uh, condition in dynamic rules. We didn't have it before because in dynamic rules we have organization structure department and could be confused with the profile, the user profile department, but we uh, have added it uh, by request. Uh, we completed the migration of core report builder, custom report, that's something that was completed the last spring, but the, the review was massive. And, Part of the review of this issue and the integration has been done in this sprint. And we have introduced some settings to disable the program cover page if partners don't want to uh, use it. Next slide, please. And, and we also fixed a number of bugs. Uh, as, as I mentioned at the beginning of the update, it was uh, a third of the points we have committed for this sprint. So this is just some selected bug that we have fixed that have been reported by partners because we have been focusing on bug fixing, but especially on, on, on bugs that have been reported by partners or Moodle US. Uh, next slide, please. And last but not least, uh, we are working on some improvements of our development workflow. Uh, Paul Holder has been working on this uh, from the workplace team. So basically we want to, in introduce some uh so formalize more the integration and integration review process in workplace so we start to introduce some changes in our workflows so we can clarify the state of the development basically adding these transitions these uh new statuses and transitions for waiting for integration review and integration review so formalizing it in a way and also we're formalizing the review process to ensure the quality of the reviews is even and and it meets the standard that we uh, have defined with the checklist. And, and we're also um, requiring more formal testing instructions as part of the acceptance criteria. So in some way, we're moving towards the direction of uh, the, what Moral LMS team is doing, but uh, the process is a bit uh, lighter. This is something we, we focus on quick wins in this sprint. And in the next increment, we will introduce uh, some deeper changes in this. Workflows. 
Uh, and next slide, I think it, this was the last one. Oh no, of course, discovery. Uh, and finally, uh, from the discovery point of view, uh, we we are refining the user stories for the learning catalog. We have a, a list of almost 500 tasks. Uh, we're trying to summarize it in a list of user stories, around 50 or 60, and then we will use that to prioritize these user stories with our partners so we can come up with a roadmap for the learning catalog feature. This is something that is ongoing. There are, this is, is intentionally small, you know, just to show the amount of user stories we have, this is just like a, a, a small portion of them. And from the discovery point of view also, we're working on the workplace uh, roadmap for the next six to 18 months. We have the priorities that partners uh, both in the last um, prioritization round, and now we need to um, create the roadmap, taking all the things into account and adding everything into the mix, uh, like dependencies or things that we need to add in the workplace roadmap because are uh, related with features that we want to release after. So with this uh, combination of features, we will create a roadmap in the next weeks, and we'll say it shortly with partners and um, and, in, and publicly, not only with partners. And I think that's all. Next slide, just in case.